Okay. So good afternoon, everybody. My name is Maria Sarić uh, from the Research Center in Netherlands, uh, TNO. Uh, and I will uh, present um, uh, the results of our system study and I will touch upon the economic evaluation uh, uh, for um, using of the membrane, mass membranes and IPOS membranes uh, in the steel industry. So as, as it was already mentioned, um, uh, based on the Paris Agreement, we all need uh, to uh, decrease our um, uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And if you look at the industry sector, uh, with the total uh, emissions of uh, 700 uh, million tons per year, uh, um, this uh, sector is the third the largest contributor in the Europe. Uh, from the uh, from the industry sector, cement, chemical, and steel sectors alone are responsible for almost 60% of these uh, these emissions. And the uh, many of industry uh, are also looking in the electrification of, uh, for instance, uh, heat and power. Uh, so repla uh, replacing of uh, fossil uh, with uh, renewable uh, electricity, and in this way uh, decreasing the CO2 emission. And I will touch upon later, uh, uh, let's say, on this uh, electrification option uh, for steel. If you look at the steel sector alone, there is already quite significant effort in, in steel industry. First, if you look at the uh, historical energy use in the steel industry, there is, uh, we can see that there is uh, a large or 60% reduction over the years in the energy use. But also, uh, there is a significant effort uh, in the reduction of CO2 emissions, and there are different programs that were run over the years uh, looking at the different technologies. Uh, um, that can reduce CO2 emissions. And uh, some of the, uh, let's say, uh, the technologies with the uh, highest long-term potential are uh, CCS in combination with top gas recycling for the bus furnace, uh, direct reduction uh, with uh, hydrogen and electric car furnace, and also electro -winning. Uh, so now we move uh, to, let's say, Genesis project, and it's, this slide was already, I think, uh, presented. Uh, so we are looking at um, um, uh, at uh, high performance MOF and um, IPOS membranes that are recognized uh, um, membranes um, with high potential for CO2 capture. And in the Genesis project, we are um, active at uh, uh, different, uh, uh, let's say, different levels, uh, uh, let's say, from powder uh, to the pile cell with a, a, a ambition to uh, move from TRL3 to TRL6. And uh, here I will mostly uh, focus on the system evaluations that uh, we did for the value chains. Uh, so, if we look at the uh, steel sector, uh, we, are, uh, we, um, we selected uh, two uh, scenarios. The first scenario is uh, uh, starting from coke oven gas, uh, removing the, using IPOS membranes uh, for uh, hydrogen separation uh, to produce the uh, pipeline hydrogen quality. Uh, and um, uh, the retentate uh, from the coke oven gas, so mostly uh, highly rich in the methane, and there is some of CO2, is sent uh, to the plasma torch in which uh, dry forming uh, takes place. And um, the syn gas that is produced uh, in this plasma torch is sent to the blast furnace, uh, in which, um, in this way, uh, the um, injection of uh, PCI pulverized uh, coal injection can be uh, decreased. And in this way, the CO2 emissions can be uh, decreased. So we use the uh, IPOS uh, membranes um, uh, in the Genesis project and we compare it uh, to the PSA uh, uh, pressure swing absorption uh, for hydrogen production. It's uh, typically used uh, in the industry. Uh, the second scenario that we consider is the capturing, um, removing CO2 from uh, the blast furnace gas. Uh, so blast furnace gas is sent to the MOF membranes, uh, CO2 is separated and sent uh, together with coke oven gas to the plasma torch in which uh, the air forming takes place and uh, um, the C gas from plasma torch is sent to the blast furnace to reduce uh, PCI injection. Um, the retentate uh, stream uh, can uh, that uh, it's mainly nitrogen and CO. Uh, 
can be considered uh, for um, uh, fisiotrope fuel synthesis or internally used uh, for uh, heating. So as uh, Jonas's case, we use the MOF membranes and the reference case is uh, CO2 capture by uh, uh, MEA absorption. So the approach that we used in this study, we first uh, develop a conceptual process design, uh, we assess the CO2 reduction potential, and uh, then uh, we uh, calculate the economics. Uh, and for mass and heat balances, as, uh, uh, for a baseline case, uh, we use the data from EIGG report. Uh, for modeling of membranes, we use uh, in-house uh, developed models, uh, uh, and also for membrane and for plasma torch. And uh, for blast, blast furnace is modeled with the, as a linear black, black box model, uh, with the, uh, which is based on uh, detailed modeling from our uh, steel partner. And uh, our membrane performance data were based on experimental uh, work uh, by project partners, and that's already presented in the uh, two presentations before. Uh, so, um, here you can see uh, our baseline um, uh, case, which is a no capture case uh, steel plant, and here you can see really simplified uh, scheme of the <laughs> steel uh, production. Um, so, you are, uh, we feed the coal to the coke oven, um, uh, and uh, uh, the coke that is produced is fed to the blast furnace, uh, uh, in which oil is reduced. Uh, coke oven gas uh, is uh, typically used for internal uh, heat generation, and the blast furnace gas uh, is uh, partially used for heat, in, uh, heat generation and uh, partially sent to the electricity uh, production, um, together with the uh, uh, basic oxygen furnace gas. And the ENG uh, report, it was assumed that there is a, a net uh, zero electricity export. So to achieve this, you need some natural gas import. Uh, uh, in the, this study, we assumed the total uh, hot metal production capacity of 4 million tons per year, and equivalent CO2 reduction is uh, uh, around uh, 2,000 uh, kilograms per ton of hot metal. So we move uh, to hydrogen separation case. As we already said, uh, um, uh, in the diapers membrane, we are going to capture the uh, hydrogen uh, for, uh, from coke oven gas, uh, and we want to produce the hydrogen at uh, pipeline quality. Uh, the retentate stream, uh, which is rich uh, um, in uh, methane um, and some CO2 is sent to the plasma torch because there is not enough uh, CO2 in the coke oven gas uh, for dry reforming, for stichiometry of the dry reforming, we are also raising the steam uh, in the, uh, uh, to uh, have combined uh, dry and uh, steam reforming the plasma torch, and the plasma torch uh, will use uh, renewable electricity. The thin gas that is um, uh, produced is sent to the blast furnace, and this will uh, directly impact the, uh, the PCI injection, so we can decrease the PCI injection. Uh, you can see here that, of course, uh, um, um, previously coke oven gas was used for uh, heat generation, uh, but um, uh, now uh, there is a lack, uh, so we can compensate that uh, by sending part of the blastulous gas uh, to, uh, for heat generation. Uh, but this will impact the electricity production, and we say we will also import the renewable electricity to satisfy the, um, uh, the, the electricity demand of the steel plant. Uh, so this is the uh, Genesis case, uh, but as a reference case, we use the uh, P, uh, PSA. Uh, in the case of CO2 separation, um, we will... Um, and use the uh, blast furnace gas, we will send the blast furnace gas to the um, um, MOF membranes in which we will separate CO2. Uh, CO2 is sent to the plasma torch together with coke oven gas uh, to generate the uh, thin gas, which will, uh, uh, in this, when you inject it in the uh, blast furnace, it can decrease the PCI use. Uh, the retentate stream. 
um, uh, can be used uh, for the uh, fission throughout liquid synthesis or for internal heat generation. And uh, the same story uh, here, uh, co-common gas is not anymore used for, um, uh, for heat generation. Uh, so we need a part of the blasphemous gas to, to supply this deficit. And as a result, um, uh, the overall electricity production goes down and we will import uh, renewable electricity to cover this deficit. Uh, as a reference case, uh, here we use the CO2 capture by amysis so on uh, absorption. Uh, just to um, uh, yeah, update with the, uh, the, the composition of the steel gases, if you look at the, uh, the blast furnace gas, uh, we see that the CO2 content is uh, 22%. Uh, and also I want to point out that there is quite high uh, content of nitrogen in this stream. Uh, uh, for coke oven gas, we have 60% um, uh, of hydrogen in the stream. Uh, and also 1% of uh, CO2, so because of that we also need to do the uh, combined uh, uh, steam uh, and, um, and dry reform. So we move now for, uh, to the results of the uh, uh, IPOS uh, membranes, so hydrogen separation membranes. Uh, so this is more detailed uh, scheme uh, that we consider. Uh, so concoven gases contain some um, uh, oxygen. So before compression, we need uh, to remove oxygen and indeed we do that in the uh, catalytic combustor. Uh, after that, this, after compression, this gas is um, uh, heated up to temperature of 250 degrees. And then uh, in the membrane, uh, hydrogen is separated uh, and the retentate stream uh, is sent uh, to the plasma torch. Um, and, uh, then, um, uh, because we could not reach uh, the uh, hydrogen uh, tail, um, the pipeline quality, uh, we are using uh, pollution PSA uh, to achieve this. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, that is the, the, the flow scheme. And what you can see here is that uh, we consider one stage and two st stage membrane system. Uh, in this graph, you can see the hydrogen purity or the hydrogen recovery. And uh, typically for um, pipeline quality uh, hydrogen, you, read, you need uh, uh, a purity of five nines. And we can see that uh, with the one, uh, in blue or in, with the, in, uh, the two stage in gray, we can't reach uh, this quality. So because of that, we select uh, one stage system followed by PSA, um, polishing PSA, and uh, we use as a feed pressure to membrane eight bars and resulting membrane area is around 5,000 square meters. And as I already said, we have a lack of CO2 uh, in our uh, retentate gas, so we are um, uh, using, uh, all, we are raising steam in the system and, uh, use, uh, and, do, uh, and doing uh, combined reform. Uh, this is uh, uh, overall, overall energy balance, so uh, here you can see no capture case uh, with net electricity ex uh, import of, yeah, with zero net electricity uh, import. And then we move to the genesis case because we are using the coke oven gas now to, in the plasma torch and for hydrogen production. We have a lack of, um, um, a lack of uh, heat, um, uh, yeah, the, the gas available for heating. So we will divert part of the blasphemous gas to use uh, for heat production. As a result, we need uh, to import uh, electricity. Uh, and the part of electricity is uh, uh, for uh, covering um, uh, electric electricity demand and part uh, 77 megawatts uh, is uh, for um, uh, compression requirements for hydrogen uh, pro production and uh, around 62 megawatts is uh, for uh, using the plasma torch. Uh, in the reference case, com uh, has a comparable um, 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 green electricity uh, uh, import uh, to two megawatts higher, and this is due to a bit higher pressures required uh, uh, to compress directly our feed gas to 10 bars that is typically used in the PSA. 
If you look at the overall results, um, uh, we can see that uh, with, uh, in the case of hydrogen separation, we can uh, decrease the uh, PCI core injection uh, for approximately 50 to 60 percent. Um, uh, so total and energy input uh, specific um, uh, energy consumption can decrease uh, and for 9% and the total CO2 emissions uh, are decreasing uh, uh, around 14% uh, uh, and they are comparable for both uh, genesis and reference case. We also look at the um, uh, green electricity uh, CO2 reduction potential. So if you will place this electricity, uh, electricity into the uh, grid mix, you can avoid 73 kilograms of CO2 uh, per uh, gigajoule of electricity imported. If you will uh, import this uh, in this uh, uh, genesis of reference case, you can avoid uh, more CO2 emissions. So that it's really interesting uh, uh, to use this green electricity in, the, in these um, systems. Uh, now I will move to the CO2 separation cases. Uh, in the case, uh, when we look at the CO2 separation, uh, we, had, we selected the two-stage two membrane system. Why? Uh, because if you use only one stage, we still have uh, quite some uh, nitrogen slip to CO2 stream, which is around uh, 10 uh, mole percent, but this will mean that this uh, uh, nitrogen will end up in the blast furnace uh, and this will accumulate inwards in the blast furnace. So we say that we need a two-stage uh, system, uh, so the blast furnace gas uh, uh, is uh, first compressed, uh, sent to the first uh, uh, stage of the membrane, uh, and the permanent uh, stream, uh, CO2 stream is uh, again compressed and sent to the second stage and the permeate, uh, the, the retentate stream is uh, uh, recycled back to the first stage and the permeate uh, for uh, the produced CO2 stream, uh, two scenarios were considered, so the, the combustion scenario and the scenario where we uh, produce the fissure drop fuels. So, uh, in order to get to the right uh, um, hydrogen to CO ratio for production of fissure through fuels, we, uh, we use uh, water gas shift reactor. Uh, uh, so, uh, we look at the uh, two cases uh, for uh, the CO2 membranes, one which is uh, having higher pressure uh, of 5 bars, and here your total uh, membrane area is ap approximately 28,000 square meters, and total energy use per CO2 capture is 1.44 gigajoules per ton, and the, in, the case of, uh, in the case with the 2 bars, then we have significant increase in the membrane area uh, to around 103,000 uh, square meters, but energy uh, also goes down 0.96 gigajoules per ton of CO2 capture. And here on this graph, um, it's just pointed out our uh, design points. And also for two bar case, um, and the, where the highest uh, uh, compression is, uh, there is the highest compression requirement that you can see in blue. This is the feed compressor. And um, um, this is, uh, it can't be seen, but this is a CO2 recovery. And uh, with the CO2 recovery, the, uh, the compression power goes down because we always recover, remove the same amount of CO2, uh, which is a, a stoichiometric amount uh, required for the, the plasma torch. We'll uh, uh, also say something about, because we said that we consider two scenarios. So in the case of the fissure trap synthesis, uh, we look at the, this case, and um, if you look at the composition of the gas after the, uh, let's say, water gas shift, we can see that uh, this uh, stream is highly diluted. It has a 60% of uh, nitrogen. And because of that, uh, we say that uh, uh, this uh, scenario is not feasible, and it's uh, uh, and especially that uh, yeah probably your reaction rate uh, will, if you work at the pressures that are typical uh, for fish top of 25 bar will be really low. Uh, so then you need to compensate, but probably compressing to really high pressures this stream. And they say it, that uh, it's better to use this retentate stream for heat generation. 
So again, um, um, uh, energy balance uh, for the CO2 separation cases. So first you can see the no capture case, the baseline case, and um, uh, we compare here the, the five bar case and the reference case using MEA absorption. We can see that um, here we need the um, import of uh, 205 megawatts of green electricity partly to cover the electricity power deficit and uh, for plasma torch we require 57 uh, megawatts and for compression uh, in the let's say to separate co2 we need the 21 megawatts uh, of course if you look at the reference case uh, uh, which is uh, maps option you you can observe that there is l um, much lower electricity uh, input required and the reason is that uh, of course may re requires uh, heat for regeneration and this heat can be um, recovered in the steel mill so this will also translate in the total um, um, results. If you look at the, uh, let's say, uh, PCI um, coal um, reduction, uh, redu uh, no, reduction. <laughs> we can see that we can reduce approximately 40% um, of coal PCI use. And um, if you look at the total um, uh, energy in, uh, input, uh, we decrease uh, approximately um, uh, four, 4 to 5% for the reference case energy input. Um, the total CO2 emission reduction is uh, uh, comparable for all cases and it's 9%. And we also compare here uh, the green electricity CO2 reduction potential. It is a bit lower than for hydrogen cases. There was around uh, 200 and here is uh, 126 to 240 depending on the case. But it's still higher than uh, if you will inject this uh, renewable electricity into the grid. Uh, here we just gave some um, breakdown of the, um, uh, the, the installed equipment costs. Uh, I uh, didn't present the numbers because these are recent results and we are still um, in the discussion in the consortium for presenting exact numbers. But what you can see here from the breakdown of the cost, this is for hydrogen case. Uh, so, um, uh, we can see that the larger cost contributor in the green is the uh, plasma torch, uh, followed by, uh, let's say, um, uh, compression and uh, membranes. Uh, so, this is membranes, it's in uh, purple, um, uh, followed by, and in the reference case, um, uh, it's also the plasma torch, uh, followed by uh, compression and PSA. Uh, for the CO2 cases, um, um, that you can see here, again, the plasma torch is the highest contributor, uh, now in brown, of 33%, uh, followed by quite uh, high costs uh, for uh, uh, compre feed compressor and also the vacuum compre compressors. And the membrane, case, uh, membrane share is uh, in the case of 5 bar, 4% uh, and uh, goes to 11% uh, uh, in the case of 2 bar. Uh, and for reference case, uh, it's uh, of course uh, the, the plasma torch followed by uh, cost uh, of the um, complete system for uh, the CO2 absorption. So in the conclusion, um, yeah, we can see that um, there is some quite some significant reduction for both uh, membrane options. In the case of the uh, IPOS membrane hydrogen separation, energy demand reduction and CO2 emission reduction for Genesis case are comparable to the reference case. Total energy reduction is 9% and the CO2 emission reduction is approximately 14%. For CO2 separation can, cases, may absorb benefits from steam, steam available at steel plant. Uh, so there is a lower energy use compared to Genesis cases, but CO2 emission reduction potential is comparable. If you look at the economic evaluation, uh, the largest contributor is plasma torch uh, and the compressors, and then uh, only followed by membranes. And uh, from OPEX, that's not presented, but the highest contributor, as you would already expect, is uh, renewable electricity costs. Uh, and this is still um, under assessment in our consortium. And in the end, I want to thank you for um, for listening to this presentation and uh, uh, yeah, you can ask uh, the questions. Thanks.